episode of Millennials to Millionaires podcast. I'm Alicia Ace West. I'm Daniel King, aka King Soul. Uh huh, uh huh. We got a very, very special guest. Oh, you just gonna steal? Let me do the introduction because this is my boy right here. This is my day one. Okay. His name is Nero, aka Mr. Art in Motion, the number one automotive shop in all of Canada, probably the world. But you know, let's say we try. We we, we, we're building there. We're gonna be humble. What's what's, what's popping? What's popping? Oh, another day, man. Another dollar. You know how we do it, man. Mm -hmm. That's that's what's up. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so essentially what you have is a auto shop yes. that I'm assuming is like really dope because since you've got here, you've been in the green room, all I heard is car this, car that, car <laughs> that. Like, tell us about your uh, business. Uh, so pretty much we do, honestly, we, we, we could do anything you think of to do it to a car like we mm-hmm. you, you want to customize it you want to just do simple things like tints whatever we can do it's endless we're a one-stop shop we do mm-hmm. collision work uh wraps uh, paint protection films we do custom like wheels honestly anything you think of doing to a car we do it mm-hmm. so um who have been some of your favorite clients because i feel like you've got a nice little roster <laughs> my clients are right here you know yeah. honestly in this room <laughs> the, the whole if you go if we take this camera outside you'll see the driveway you'll see yeah. my work. the drive through and it's like i did this and yeah. i did that and, and i did this and that the whole drive i pull up like damn that looks fine yeah, <laughs> yeah. the driveway is looking like a, a couple drive, of mil right now before i came in so yeah the driveway is looking like a couple mil right now <laughs> so it. i know Listen, let me tell you, I pulled up today and I was just like, this is how we are moving today? Yeah. Like, yeah. Y'all could have told me I could have rented a car. Like, <laughs> I could have rented something a little bit so nicer. Let me park, her, like, let me park her on the block. <laughs> so has cars always been like your thing? Since I was a little kid. My mm-hmm. mom walked into the door, like walked in the door one day and see me underneath like one of those toy Jeeps that you can yeah. drive around. And I was under there with a screwdriver and she already knew that was it. That's me, you know? You were playing fix. That's it. That's it. I I was taking apart Mm -hmm. something that wasn't even broken, so. Mm -hmm. And so how did you trans, because you own your company now, Mm Art in Motion Auto Care, right? Yep. Um, So how did you make that transition from, I'm assuming, being an employee to having your full business? Yeah, so that's, that's a story. I mean, Daniel knows Dex. Started from the bottom, now we're here. (laughs) We um, have way honestly, too many Drake references. <laughs> Yo, Drizzy better cut that check. I, I work for so many people, and honestly, it just it wasn't working. Like I kept bringing my clientele there, even though like I was really young when I started. I was 21 mm-hmm. when I started my business. Mm-hmm. I'm almost I'm turning 30 this year. Um, Welcome it just, to I, the 30 gang. Yeah, that's gonna be mm-hmm. a, hangovers are gonna last a long time. That's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I just couldn't work for anybody else anymore. Like I just I wasn't valued. The, the way I should have been yeah. for what I was bringing to the table especially with my last employer like I was working at dealerships I was sponsored by Honda like they paid for my school oh wow um, I was working at the dealership I left there because it wasn't good enough and like mm-hmm. I just I wanted more and I, and I always said to myself that I'd open up a business mm-hmm. but I just didn't know that I'd do it at such a young age right and like nowadays like there's so many young entrepreneurs like, yeah everyone wants to be a business person now mm-hmm. you know like when we started like 10 15 years ago it's definitely it was pushed. hard like they, they see you as a 20 year old starting a business like you, are you actually gonna make it you know yeah. and there was no social media like when i started instagram had just come out mm-hmm. we saw it facebook mm-hmm. and like that's old school stuff now you know and um yeah it was a scary step and i just it took the it took it took that one day that my boss was just like he treated me like shit, and it's like, yeah. I was like, how could you? Like, I actually fixed something I for need to him. Take this. Yeah, like if you go on my <laughs> if you go on my Insta story you'll, on my IGTV, you'll see the whole mm-hmm. story. But it was simple, small story. But like, he, his AC broke down in his office, and he always sits up with his legs on the desk. And um, I fixed it. He left one. He left a couple hours before, and I went and took the initiative. We were we were slow that day. Yeah. I went. I fixed the AC, and I went back in the back of the shop. I opened the front door and the mid. There's a middle door. Mm-hmm. I opened the, the middle door so that the air can that just flow through the shop because mm-hmm. we were hot in the back, yeah. right? Even though I fixed the AC, he came in and he closed the middle door and he turned the AC on because I I had called him say hey I fixed your AC whatever right, and then I when he came in after like 20 minutes I went back I'm like yo, Dex can we like open up this door like we're dying in the back. And he's like, get the F out of here. He's like, get back to work. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I fixed it. I'm like, yo, I'm done. I closed my toolbox and I dipped. I'm, like, I'm <laughs> yeah. done. You're it's like, me- I'm, yeah, I'm out of here. No looking yeah. back. You know how much money I used to make him every year, yeah. bro? Like every day. And I'm like, nah, I yeah. can't. Yeah. And I opened up the street, like right up the street, like a minute away from him. Oh, a week, a week you're like, later. we about to be competition yeah. now, baby. Yeah. Yeah. A week later. But we like he, did, he, just, he just did mechanical. Like I yeah. want to do something, something totally different. Like yeah. we do custom stuff, right? Yeah. Um, and the aesthetics. So it was, it's, it's a totally different business. It didn't mm-hmm. hurt him in any way. Mm-hmm. Obviously, my clientele went from there to me. But yeah, it just, it's been the best decision I ever made in my life. I, I can't even lie. It's paying off. Yeah, For sure. Definitely. People definitely. probably look at you now and it's like, all right, you drive the McLaren. You got the bust down chain on. 
you know, you got the rollie on your wrist, like they probably think like, you know, you were you were spoon fed or like your parents, this is your daddy's money, your mommy's money. Like tell people about like what it really took for you to become successful. Cause I remember that shop right there at Arenda and Rutherford. Oh, yeah. I remember you posting snaps, you and your wife Christina, and she's helping you on the cars. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I remember those days, you yep. know what I mean? Like when you had the S4 before yep. the McLaren yep. and before that was the Integra, like Take us back, like, to the beginning, bro, and, like, what were your thoughts when you were starting, and did you ever think that things would get this big so fast? Like, you're at 100K followers right now. Like, yeah, take us to the I, beginning. and I take never us would have thought it would have been this big. To be honest, like, that fast, maybe in, like, 20, 30 years. Who knows? It takes a long time for a business to grow to even where, even where we're at now, right? Yeah. And, like, we started with a shop that was 1,000 square feet. Like, mm-hmm. you could fit two cars in there tight. You know, Daniel came to the shop. Um my wife would be on her knee taking off wheels like we're like i still to this day like i'm dressed up now but you see me on a regular day and i'll be getting out of my five hundred thousand dollar car with dirty clothes dirty yeah. shoes like i'm still, still i'm in the still work. grinding still yeah like, I, I still do a lot of the background the paperwork the running around but there's still the days where like my hands are bleeding still my knuckles like there's scars mm-hmm. everywhere on my on my hands you know like no matter what it's like the, the goal was always to get to somewhere that's obviously where we're comfortable like my yeah. parents are good my family i have a house and it just kept growing and growing and social media was a huge part of that i can't even lie like instagram i'd say probably is like maybe 80 90 percent of my business mm-hmm. right and then now over the past eight years of being in business it's now word of mouth and word like and then yeah now yeah. they see the page and whatnot right mm-hmm. but yeah i started with a small small shop i started with my own money i didn't go to the bank which to this day, I always thought, it's not really a mistake, I'm still where I am now, but if I had taken my, my money that I had and, and gone to the bank and taken a loan, I could have even gotten bigger from the beginning. Yeah. But everything happens for a reason, right? Absolutely. So I use my savings, lesson. yeah, like I use my savings, because I used to work 100 hours a week before I opened the shop. Mm-hmm. I'd work 60 hours at the at the mechanic shop, mm-hmm. and I'd bartend, like I was telling you earlier. I'd yeah. bartend for about 30, 40 hours on top of that. So about 100 plus hours a week, no sleep, and... I would save my money. Again, I still bought nice things. I still wanted nice things and I was still in the car game. So I put a lot of my money into the cars Mm -hmm. and a lot of people knew me uh, with my Integra back in the days. Mm -hmm. Like that's what kind of put me on the map. And everybody was driving Civics. To this day, people will still (laughs) say it. It's one of the baddest Integras that was ever out here in in, in the city. You know, I still have it in my showroom. Like it's oh, literally wow. sitting in my showroom right now. You have a showroom. Yeah. How many cars are in that showroom? Oh, just the one car, but oh, okay. it's, it's my baby. <laughs> I was like, like oh, I've you had, got a whole showroom. Yeah, like yeah. I've many, many cars. That's it's but yeah. that one car was so sentimental to me because mm-hmm. I went through a lot of stuff. I went through hard times in my life with mm-hmm. that car. I used to sit in that car and cry and drink. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like I went through some messed up stuff like in my life. At the end of the day, my mom, my dad, they gave me everything they could. They gave me the shirt off their back, you know, mm-hmm. and they're they're immigrants. They they came to this country with nothing. You know, they still work at a factory. And as much as me wanted to even like make them retire right now, they still don't want to because they just have that mentality that they yeah, want to work. You have to keep and that's, working yeah, hard. Right? But they gave me everything. My mom, my dad believed in me and then they helped me out with the business. Mm-hmm. And now like I'm able to, again, I bought them a condo with, with M5V as a little gift for me. I bought them a brand new car. And it, like it just makes me proud to say that, you know, I came from nothing. Like mm-hmm. we were talking about Rexdale. Like I was born and raised in Rexdale in an apartment building with cockroaches and mice, you know, and like mm-hmm. I didn't want that life anymore. I seen my one of my best friends get shot like yeah. right right in front of me, you know, mm-hmm. and then it's like you go through so many things in your life and you're just like, what can I do to make myself better? Mm-hmm. So I just kept grinding, grinding and like honestly, even to this day, you go on my Instagram, you'll see me sometimes there at like two AM, three AM. And I'm still working, you know. I have a I have a newborn at home too. Congrats, but little E, little E, little E. He's getting big now. I'm yeah, big E, big E now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's hard. Like, and it's now what eight years into my business, and I'm still working hard. Mm-hmm. So it's like you can't give up, and that's what it's grind twenty four seven. Yeah, you know. What what um, tips do you have to like really scale your business? Honestly, just keep pushing for all your goals. Like it, the mm-hmm. second you feel like you can't do it. Like you're, just, nothing's gonna happen. You just gotta keep going. Like do whatever it takes to make make it happen. You know, um, it, whether it's spending money to to make your business flourish, whether it's making say a shop or a nail salon, whatever it is, you always gotta be up to date with the times. Yeah. And you always gotta spend money to make money. Mm-hmm. That's one thing a lot of people make a mistake. They don't spend the money, but they have the they have the talent. They have all mm-hmm. the, like everything is there, but they don't have the money to start. There's always a source to get the money, whether it's you even paying to get a high interest loan for a little bit. Like it's gonna pay off, you know. So it just I say just just go for it. Like never give up on your goals and just take that take that risk. Like that's your biggest thing. My question for you is like once you reach 
like a certain level. You're like very successful, one of the most successful friends I have. But once you reach a certain level in success, how do you not get comfortable? Like you're driving a McLaren, you have, I don't know how many properties now, but like, <laughs> how do you like still wake up every morning, go to work? Like I see you on Instagram, I see you, I know how long you're at the shops, I know the, the days that you put in, like yeah. people just see the end result, but they don't really see the process. They don't really see what the blood, sweat and tears you've really put to put your company where it is right now. Like how do you remain motivated? How do you not get comfortable in the, in the process? Honestly, I think now, because again, I'm, I'm turning 30 now, you know, and like I'm not a kid anymore. My like there's so much more that I want, not just for me. It's for my family now, you know, like yeah, now I have a long son. Term. Yeah, mm -hmm. like now it's like I have a son. I have a wife, my mom, my dad that's going to be retiring soon. Like I want to be able to take care of them where, you know, but like pensions, nothing. Yeah. What am I going to do? Like I'm not going to let my parents sit back. Like mm -hmm. that's my that's my motivation every single day is that. I want better for my family so they didn't have to go through hard times that I even for what I went through like it wasn't even I can't even consider that hard like if we look at our parents mm -hmm. that's insane what they went through you know yeah. they went through wars they went through so much things and like we still had it good and now we're living amazing you mm -hmm. know and I just want my family to grow up and not have issues like that but at the same time they still got to they got to understand the value of what work of dollar, is and what, what the hard dollar work is, is. Mm -hmm. no matter what i love you biggie but you know <laughs> you're gonna know what hard work is that's yeah. you nothing's gonna be given like i want to see that hard work i want to see like school nowadays is honestly like you can be anything nowadays without school but mm -hmm. i still want that education i still want to make sure that you have something on your back just god forbid anything does fall back but mm -hmm. You just have to, like, I just don't want them just to be everything given to them. No, because that didn't happen to me. And I don't, I don't think anyone should just take that. Like, mm -hmm. nothing should be given because you take everything for granted after. Yeah. That. No, I definitely right? hear that. I don't have kids yet, but I <laughs> definitely want to be able to instill, like, working hard and yeah. working for your stuff. But also, like, spoil them. Because, yeah, of course. Like, you know I mean? You're still like, going to get spoiled. Like, go ahead. It's, 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 yeah. Little don't, don't sleep. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> ears drip down into Burberry. <laughs> <laughs> don't sleep. Yeah. He's just, very spoiled. Like, he, he's still his, spoiled. His yeah. outfits are better than mine. <laughs> like, I see him and I'm jealous. I'm like, bro. Like, his outfit costs more than mine. I bought him his first Burberry too, so you know wow. that was you, Daniel. Big talk, big talk. <laughs> I don't even have Burberry, you guys. No. <laughs> um, so you said that social media has definitely been a driver for the sex success of your business. You said eighty nine percent. You feel like comes from? I'd say about eighty to ninety percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, now the percentage is probably a little bit different because yeah. I do have a lot of just re like clientele that just keep coming back and bringing mm -hmm. their family. Yeah. But like, yeah, social media was the biggest thing. And how do you, what, like, were some tips that you started to use so, to grow your social media? Because you got to grow it first yeah, before so you can actually. I, I always try to make my page look different than other people. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can see just by my layout. Like, I have girls. Yeah. Like, that's huge. Bad mm -hmm. things. Yeah, bad things. Baddies. Yeah. You know what? Then they sex sells. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, <laughs> like I mean, I drive my, my, my clientele, like, which my guys, most of them, girls obviously still like the pictures. And they see that. And then, mm -hmm. like, I look at my insights and I can see a photo of a girl. Like, they might not like the picture, but mm -hmm. I see how many people came to the picture. And yeah. then that's people come to my page. And then I have pictures of just, you know, nice cars or, like, mm -hmm. clients that have dope cars that are, like, you know, professional photos. I'll have that mm -hmm. one line. I have the girls and I have the work that we do. And I post constantly. Yeah. Because, honestly, the second you stop, you disappear for two, three days, your insights, everything drop. Yeah. So you've got to be on the gram constantly, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok now is mm -hmm. huge. You just got to constantly be there because once you disappear, it takes a while for you to even come back on someone's on homepage or whatever mm -hmm. it is. People right? forget about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest. Nowadays, I've been I've been slacking on the Instagram because I've been so busy. And then I go Me home. Too. I have my son. <laughs> and I, nowadays, I pay, post maybe every two days. But my Sometimes stories, it's a lot. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a job on its own. Yep. You know? Um, but I do post on the stories because a lot of people look at your stories. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll constantly be in whatever I'm doing. Even if I'm eating, if I'm sitting with my son, I'm posting it. You know, like... People will come to your page just to watch you too. It's crazy, mm -hmm. but like at the same time, if you have a business, they're gonna yeah. they're gonna see your business in between there, mm -hmm. right? At the end of the day, well, this is something that I've always told people in terms of like following. You either inspire somebody, so you inspire them based off of the things that you're like saying. Um, they aspire to be like you, so you have the luxury cars and uh, the girls and the lux life, or um, you evoke some type of feeling from them, make them cry, laugh, or that you're just straight up educating. And like those are the th like four pillars that if you follow one of those, like somebody is definitely going gonna, to yeah. like gravitate to you oh, yeah. naturally. I, I post so motivational stuff on my page mm -hmm. all the time, right? Mm -hmm. 
And not only that, I help a lot of businesses. Like I post business on my page to help people grow their business as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes without even anyone asking me if I actually just like it and I just post it without them even saying anything, you know, and then they, they obviously love it because they see the traction that goes to their page. But yeah, like, yeah, it's uh, on the, on the page. If you have stuff that's going to motivate you, you have lifestyle, you have everything, they're going to, they're going to gravitate to you for sure. Yeah, for sure. And then being consistent. Yes. That's the thing. Consistency is key. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Biggest thing. For everything in general in life, right? No, 100,000 percent. Yeah. What is some advice you would give to your younger self? So, like, say you in high school, like before you started working at Dex, and like you know you're <laughs> you're 15, like you're in grade 10. Like, what, what age did you get your first job? Uh, first job, I think I was 11 years old. 11. Yeah, okay. So you've been, you've been grinding from young. It's obviously mm-hmm. cash, right? Yeah, 100. <laughs> percent Yeah, yeah. It was, what what it would was you tell? Ass. What would you tell that 11 year old kid? Like you giving your advice to like your younger self, like what what would you tell them? Ah, <sighs> that's a hard question. Honestly, I mean, the, the how hard I worked. Like now, I'm feeling the pain. I'll be honest. I, I'm in a lot of pain all the time. Like I have planters. I have carpal tunnel disease in my hand. Like I worked hard, and I I think I didn't work smart in a lot of ways mm. because uh, you know I was a kid. I didn't really listen. Sometimes I didn't listen, didn't listen to my mom. I didn't listen to my boss. Like. They're like, don't do it this way or don't do it that way. And I still did it, but I got the job Stubborn. done. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's like it's like when you're like you're crouching down and you're setting up a hoist, for example, and you're on your knees without a knee pad. You know how many times I heard my boss say, yo, don't do that. Put the knee pad on. And now I have pain like crazy in my knee. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I would. I think, yeah, I probably would have listened a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, the success doesn't mean anything when you're in pain, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, I think that's probably why I, I think that's what I would do. I'd probably tell myself, don't do that again. <laughs> yeah, but now, like, it's now I tell my students, like, if I see my student without a knee pad or, like, without, a, like, a, you know, safety glasses, like, tell them to just leave. Like, you're not, like, I'm looking out for you now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And try to tell them to actually listen and yeah, not yeah. be like, you. yeah. <laughs> be like, listen, I'm coming from experience, okay? Yeah. These bones are a lot older yeah. than what I actually Yeah, like, I feel am. like I'm like, 50 now. Like, my <laughs> bones are hurt. I gotta go home and spend an hour to. F- put my feet in a massage chair like it's it's bad it's Mm -hmm. bad i feel that okay so this is part one of um the episode entrepreneur episode with nero from art in motion auto care um you're gonna stick around we're gonna do some more we're gonna talk some more yeah next episode we'll get into a little bit more of like secrets of success Mm -hmm. and like if you want to be like nero like some of the things he did so you can follow in his footsteps and in order to be successful kind of some gems he's gonna drop on us so we're looking forward to that stay tuned for the next episode Mm -hmm. it's daniel king aka king sold i'm alicia ace west and this is millennials to millionaires nero is still (laughs) in the place uh, so he is the owner of Art in Motion Auto Care. He gets your cars all nice and fancy. <laughs> For right? sure. 100,000%. So right now we're coming out of a pandemic. Uh, we're coming out of, you know, the, the COVID-19. And I've been, like I said, I'm at your shop all the time. I see what you're posting on IG. In the pandemic, people are losing jobs. People are, you know, businesses are closing. It seems like you were busier in the pandemic than you were before. Like in the winter time when businesses are boards spending money. No, no. In, in no, the winter you see the cars that come through the winter time. Exactly. In the winter yeah. time when businesses are slow, businesses are closing their doors, I see Ferraris, McLaren's, Lambos still coming in. Like what I want to know is like how is how are you number one in the game? You know what I mean? Like what what's your competitive advantage? Like besides like you don't have to give everybody the secret You're sauce. Me too much credit, man. No, no I'm, I'm being I'm, be- I'm not number one yet. I'm trying to be number one. Okay. I love the humility. You know, but like what besides your hard work, like what are some of like your competitive advantages? Like how do you keep your business going at like a hundred percent all the time? Like it seems like you're I never come into the shop a day and, and it's empty. I never hear you say, yo, I had a slow day today. It's like, yo, I'm getting home 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Like, I'm tired, bro. <laughs> like, Honestly, man, like I said, it's just the consistency, bro. Like, I just, I, my, my, my work has always been quality over quantity. Now we're, we're getting so busy, like, to the point where it's like, I, it's hard to keep that quality up. But I'm I, like, I'd rather stay those extra hours to make sure that the cars are still top notch. So when my cars leave, when they go to, you know, a car meet or if they go to a dinner and someone's asking where that car got done i want to make sure that they say that it was our emotion you know mm-hmm. and that quality sticks in their head and they know that's where the shop to go to and um like i said bro, it's been eight years officially in business i've been doing this since i was like 11 years old so i've built my clientele before that and again social media being a big part of it i have a lot of followers so 
the, I mean, you can have a thousand followers and still be busy. Yeah. I have almost a hundred and some, almost 110,000 10, followers now. Um, so the, the work will call, always be there. It just like, mm-hmm. my biggest thing is I want to make sure my quality will never go down. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean the winter time, I'm God blessing. Like everything has been good. I just been getting better and better every year. Um, I'll be very honest with you. Like if you go back to my page, maybe yeah, two about two years, two and a half years ago, and go back to the page and see where I was at. We were getting Lambos and Ferraris, but it would be like one off here or there. Nowadays, it's like every day there's like four or five of those cars at the shop. Mm-hmm. Every single day. Yeah. And you know what? And I, if we go back to episode one, you, you hear you spend money to make the money. So for me, I've always been a Honda guy. Like my Integra is in my showroom still, you know? <laughs> I had an Audi before that, the S4. Like for me, I would, I didn't really ever think I would go and buy a supercar. Yeah, maybe one day when I'm older, when I retire, or whatever. Like for me, it doesn't really do anything. Like I'd still rather drive, like, I told you, I'm going to pick up a Corvette today. That's been my dream car. Some people will laugh like it's a, it's a hundred and hundred fifty thousand dollar car. You have a half a million dollar car. How's that your dream car? But when you like something, you like something. For Period. Me, yeah. So like, but what I did, I went and got that McLaren. And if you look at it in 2018, from 2018 to now, and you see before that, maybe there was that one, two car that came in that was really nice in the month and we have a post of whatever it is. 2018, I got the car. People, to- they trust you a totally different way. My mm-hmm. quality hasn't changed. It's still the exact same quality. Yeah. But right. your, your brand. You. It's My the brand. lux. Yeah. It's the lux. Right? They so were they like, see oh, that. Yeah. this is how you are. Yeah. And, and they see, they're like, oh, this guy drives that. Okay, I trust him with my car. So now, mm-hmm. like in the wintertime, I think I'm more busy than the summer. Like, I mean, now <laughs> we have COVID. Like, this, this changed everything this year. But mm-hmm. this past winter was insane. I thought I was in, in like the heart of summer. Yeah. In like January, February. We had, I had like over $20 million of cars. Like, in that one month like it was crazy you yeah. know and um yeah i think it's just because i spent the money i got the car i'm enjoying the car i can't lie it's a, it's a mclaren it's anyone's dream car mm-hmm. like you, it's it's the car that some people will never ever get you know and and to me to even get to that point it's still for me it's it's it's, it's an advertisement it's mm. it's a business expense at the end yeah. of the day right like i'd be spending that in advertisement on google or whatever or a billboard mm-hmm. so if i'm spending extra 30 40 50k a year on a car that i go to car shows with i promote my business with i pull up to a gas station i'm giving out 10 business cards like that makes sense in my i guess in my industry for a car world it did me good right yeah. sure. it pays itself it 20, pays itself and like you know over. like that that money that i made back with that car like i literally made it back that mm-hmm. year you know yeah. what I mean? So it's, and now I have a car that I can roll around with. It's dope, you know? And yeah, and I have that clientele now. The trust is there. Like, again, but my, I want to make sure everyone knows that my quality never changed. It's been yeah. the exact same From as day when one. I was a little kid. Yeah. You know? And it's going to keep going, even and though gonna you're going to have going. an yeah. influx of yeah. uh, cars coming in. You're yeah. going to still have that A1 quality. That's it. Um, since we are talking about COVID, how, what are some things that COVID has taught you that is going to help you adjust your business to be better long term? Because nobody's seen this coming. Yeah. And nobody was prepared. Oh, but it's definitely yeah. has taught us something. Yep. So what are some things that you've learned that you're going to use going forward? So, uh, I mean, for us, we lost a lot of money. I'll be straight with you. Like everyone did. There's yeah. multi-billion dollar business that are closing down. For sure. I lost a lot of money because collision work stopped almost dead stop for us. And we mm-hmm. make a lot of money with the collision side. Mm-hmm. Everything else is fun for us. Like it just... We All the branching money. drivers were yeah. inside, not making right. Like, no one was driving. No one was getting into accidents. <laughs> the dang Brandon drivers. we lost a lot of money. But... At the same time, I think I was still doing good because I still had my regular work coming in, which mm-hmm. is still paying the bills. I'm still it's still able to pay like the, the dinners and all that stuff. But my biggest thing why I was still kind of comfortable is because I had my property. Mm. You know what I'm you know what I mean? Like I'm turning 30 years old and I have what what six seven properties already. That's God bless up. them. You know what yes. I mean? Yeah. And if anything were to ever happen and you needed money instantly, you can always sell something. Even if the market's down, at least if you get something out of it, yeah. you have some money to fall back on. Mm-hmm. And I have a savings. So no matter what, I'll still go buy these flashy things and nice things, but I still have a good savings. Mm-hmm. There's always a fund. If anything ever to, were to have happen, you have something to fall back on. So it doesn't matter if you're doing really good in your business or whatever it is. Don't go and spend all your money. Yeah. Make sure you have a savings. Make sure you have property because that mm-hmm. is your biggest thing. Mm-hmm. And real estate it's not going to depreciate mm-hmm. i mean we haven't seen it depreciate in no. how many years it's, not always, in this city. it's always 30 going down here to what 26 27 like yeah. you know like you can see no matter what in the years that we grew up and watched our parents houses yeah. like flourish mm-hmm. like 10 times over 
Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you want to put yeah. your money in property? Okay, so yes. so talk about it. When did you first buy your first property? So I was, I think, 24, 25 years old. Um, that was one of my goals that was on my list in my 10-year plan. And I, I, I was, it was in November. My birthday's in December. I'm like, I have to crush this goal. Mm-hmm. And I... Before that, I always constantly, like, I would get the flyers in the mail, and I'd, like, always sign up. I'd, like, put my registration in this builder, that builder, that builder, and I always had new stuff coming in, new builds, new prices, new phases, and I was like, okay, one day I'll buy a house, you know, and I had an engagement planned. Mm -hmm. I had a wedding was, like, that would be a couple years. I'm like, I'm going to be getting married. I need a house. Yeah. So I took the plunge. I stood in line because the market was super hot. Mm-hmm. This was 2015, 2016. Um, super, super hot. Like right before that big like jump in 2017 where it took the dip a little bit. But uh, there was people like selling houses for above asking like crazy. And I yeah. was like, you know what? I got to get into this before this goes like out the world. Where I would never be able to afford a house. <laughs> so... I, I saw the paper flyer come in for Paradise Homes, and I saw that this new new build was coming. It was a townhouse, mm-hmm. um, you know, nothing crazy. And uh, I said, okay, let me let me go and just take a drive by. Like I would drive by every day, like because they said they would release it. Because again, there was a line everywhere you go. Every builder had a lineup. Like they would say they'd be releasing it on this day, but a week before, there's line of people camping out. So I got the release date and I drove, I think it was like two weeks, Mm -hmm. every single day before the release date, I would drive by. It was on 410 and Beauvaird and I would drive by before I go home, I would exit and go left instead of going right. I'd go like, look at the place, make sure there's no one there. And one day, like I skipped like two days and uh, I skipped like two days and then I was like, you know what, let me just take a drive back again. Cause like I'm busy, I'm working still, right? Mm -hmm. And I seen two people camped out. I was like, no. Let me pull in right now. And I had clients waiting at the shop. Yeah. I call my I call my, my girl and I'm like, listen, like, there's people lined up now. Like, I'm standing here. Like, yeah. figure something out. You go there now. Like, <laughs> deliver the cars. Be like, yo, sorry, something came up. We got to go, you know? Yeah. So I parked up. I had no lawn chair. I sat on the sidewalk. I'm like, I'm sitting right here. I'm not moving. That's crazy. This yeah. is sounding like a Jordan release. Yo, no, no, no. Like, crazy. That's I'm I said, I'm not moving. I'm and you know what I did? Like, I don't even let you know I did? Jordan. I called every <laughs> single person I know that's close to me and said, yo, yeah. this is the opportunity. Get your house right now. Yeah. yeah. Right? I'm like, yo, like this, like we're not going to be able to afford a house later on. Like yeah. we have millennials that are, are probably like, it's, it's almost impossible to buy a house now. Yes. So I was like, me. yo. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, I'm sitting here. I, I'm not moving. So I call mm. my girl. I'm like, yo, bring me some stuff. Bring me a chair. Like, I'm going to sit here. Bring me some snacks, you know? And, and this was a, a week before the opening date. Oh, One wow. week, yeah. Wait, and so it was you so had a cold. lineup for a week? A week. And what? this is in November, okay? So it's cold. It's cold outside. Raining. Oh, my God. Yeah, so we're, and we, and it was crazy. So I was, I was number four in the line. Mm-hmm. Um, me and my wife end up running the whole line. Which was crazy. We, because my wife is so like that girl's super educated. Like yeah. she had spreadsheets, she had Excel. Like everyone's like lot, what what premium, what phase, what elevation they wanted. She had everything with oh, their wow. phone number, email, and like we would have every like three hour check in. So you'd have to come in. And again, nowadays the way they do lines is crazy. Like you mm-hmm. it has to be you. You can't send mm-hmm. your brother or your sister. Yeah. Like we were able to like yo, if you want to switch out, switch out. Bring your sister, your brother, cousin, friend, whatever. As mm-hmm. long as someone's there for you, yeah. Switch out. So I physically, st- I was there for a week. Like, I think I showered maybe twice. And I and this come from a prison that showers like two, three times a day. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I was disgusted. But, Dirty. Uh, yeah. But like, because we were running the line, we had to be there. Yeah. We couldn't, like, I couldn't leave. My wife couldn't leave. So we had family coming and bringing us food and like, yeah. bring out a towel to like wipe down our skin. Like, you know, it was, it was bad. This but, is mind no, blowing. This is, this is what it, what it took yeah. to get our first property. Yeah. And now we have that house plus however many houses we have in the yeah. span of what four or five years four years mm-hmm. and honestly that was the best thing that i think that happened to me yeah so that, that house that property you still have it till today i still have it i'm living in that house now. okay so let me He's ask not you this giving it up, no, no, no. i have multiple properties what, but i'm living in the house what now. i want to know is since you bought that house in whatever year until today how profit. much profit <laughs> how much appreciation but half a mil Half a mil. Half a mil. So you in, waited outside in, a week. So I moved in in 2017, yeah. February. We're in what, 2020 now? Three it's years. About just three years? I made half a mil. 
half a million half a dollars. Like, and no it's bullshit. still serving the purpose for yep. you and your yeah. little Recently. family. Again, we bought another house now, which yeah. is being built. It's in Kleinberg. Um, it's a detached now. Mm-hmm. It's bigger. It's a lot bigger. Uh, you know, I have a kid now. I don't. I need the parking. Yeah. It's gonna be done in May. And I know you need the parking. That's for sure. Parking. You're, you're about to, you're about I'm to buying a hoist to park the cars in the garage. It's a two <laughs> yeah. car garage to make it four car garage. Yeah. Oh, wow. So yeah. Wow. So y'all um, fancy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I still live in that house now. I love the house. Don't get me wrong. I got because I was number four in the list. Mm-hmm. They only had you know a select amount. It's crazy because the builder would say they have a hundred houses, but they only released like fifty of them. Mm-hmm. They lied to you like it's crazy. Yeah. But um, this is really I got, sounding like a Jordan there was, drop. Th- there, was, <laughs> there was two of the biggest houses in the whole neighborhood. Again, townhouse yeah. corner, yeah. and everything else was three stories. Corner mine's, is key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mine's a two story, so which is better than having three stories and how like your room smaller. Is small. Yeah. So I got a 2,000 square foot town corner. Beautiful. It's more than enough for me and my wife right now. Yeah. But now with a kid, he's running around like there's no space yeah. for the kid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, but you came up. That's a nice yeah, little and, look. And, and, and like me being, I love interior decorating. That's like my mm-hmm. other ho- like me little too. hobby that I have. Yeah. So like my house is decked out. Mm-hmm. My basement's done. Like my bar is like 50 grand and just liquor. Yeah. Like oh, my wow. bar is crazy downstairs. Yeah. No, they're not there. It's crazy. Yeah. So like I think I'm just like, I, I think five, I could, it could, be, could be more Yeah. Um, in profit. But yeah, like now I'm able to pull out equity there from there if I really want and invest mm-hmm. in other yes. places. I have money from my business that I've been using for my other property. But yeah. now that I'm buying this new house, I might be selling. I don't know for sure. It's my first home. I might want to just keep it for Ethan or yeah. whatever it is. But even if I didn't want to sell, I have half a million equity in there so yeah. that I can pull out and use yeah. towards yeah. wherever I want to do. Yeah. Or if, if I want to put mm-hmm. on this new home, like the new home's a lot of money. For so, sure. mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, like at least I have that there, you know, but... Property is huge, man. Like, honestly, if there's one advice I can give anybody, like, do mm-hmm. whatever it takes to get your property. Yeah, like, why real estate? Like, you know, when you were 20, like, why was that one thing yeah. that was on your list so, to, to do? Like, why? So, see, again, my mom, again, my mom's immigrant. Like, she's mm-hmm. from nothing. Like, and she came from, and every single, she, like, to this day, like, we just had this conversation last week. To this day, she's like, why didn't I pull out my equity? Because she has a lot of equity in her home. She bought a home for 300000 330. Okay, mm-hmm. in 2006, the one that she lives in now. Okay, and there is over like 1.3 million in profit in that house right no now. No way. Yeah, like this is the harder Wait, Brampton when did Airport. She buy it in 2006. 2006. And she like it was it was built in 2006. And she paid what? 300 thousand, right? And what she did to the house, I, I can just we need can, to make sure we I can sell this for 1.5, 1.6, like that, just like that, like that. Sure. Like that okay. You snap your fingers. It's 1.5, 1.6. It, it's at 1. Castlemore and Airport, like you're in the heart, like you're yeah. Vaughn Brampton borderline, like yeah, right around the corner area. from here, right here. Just shout right out, shout out to all the people that bought homes in Brampton early, yeah, because you know, we were laughing, we were up. laughing at Brampton, we still laugh. You know, and my mom, but they went in. Yeah, she's like, oh, why didn't I pull out some money to go buy this house, buy that? Like we have how many houses we want? And remember, I tell us telling you right before this instead of me buying my s4 if i had put that 30k down on a house back in 2011 like i, I could probably have 15 houses now instead yeah. of seven right yeah but again like my business grew so i don't ever i'm not gonna like say i messed up yeah it's right? not a regret it's not a regret but you know we could have it's had a more. learning it's, it's something a learning that you learn exactly. from but, and now you can teach your son yeah. you can be like you can listen you don't really need that Audi. <laughs> you need the house you can yeah, use right that to do yeah. this and this and flip yeah. it and make more whether it's a house or and commercial. then you can buy two Audis. exactly so like <laughs> once you have that foundation where the money's there you can use that to get whatever you want mm-hmm. after right um but yeah, like she regrets like not doing this and that. I'm like, mom, well, you know, we're here now. We're like, we're still yeah. moving. Again, the prices are crazy. Yeah. But at least we have some capital to use now, right? Mm-hmm. And we were just talking about selling our homes. Like, well, like this is my baby. Like, I don't want to go. But I'm like, Aww. mom, you have this much money here. You know, you can pay off X amount of debt you want, pay off the mortgage, and you still have She's like chilling. like seven eight hundred thousand in yeah. your hand. Like, She's chilling. go Way buy more than house. the average. Yeah, buy a brand new house if you want. It's just you and dad now. You yeah. know. Yeah. And because uh, you don't need the same size. Yeah. She probably you bought it with like family. Right. And mine See, and my stuff mom's like biggest that. thing is her garden. So I'm like, she's like, yeah. I want my garden. She don't want to no townhouse. Aww. She wants yeah. to detach. Uh-huh. I'm like, mom, in like five years, when else. I'm good with my wife and now I'm able to bring my parents back, we're gonna have a big home and you're gonna be in the house. Like that's yeah. my goal. Like, <laughs> like you I'm old school. You know what I mean? Like I want yeah. my parents to live with me. Yeah. That's but like I, I still hilarious. want to enjoy my time yeah. with my wife at of least course. for the first ten years. Yeah, like let me enjoy. You know, I don't have to make no noise. I don't have to worry about. You know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like baby girl, keep it quiet, please. 
<laughs> I ain't making no baby in the other room. My I'd parents like, there, so for me, yeah. I'd be like, Ugh, ain't nobody told you to bring your parents in the house. Okay, <laughs> it's your decision. So handle so, it. Yeah. I mean, whether, handle it's my, it. <laughs> whether it's my in-laws or my parents, I want to have like I'm I'm so family oriented. Like, yeah. I want to always be around my family. I for love sure. my family. It sucks right now because I'm so busy. But like now that I have a kid, like it opens your eyes a lot more. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah. See the things so, that are really yeah. Worth so it. like now, like me and Sherrod were talking. Like he's looking at some land in Kleinberg and stuff too. I already told myself I'm taking an acre. Like that's I'm starting with that. You yeah. Know? Wait. So for the people don't don't know where that is because I don't know where that is. Where is it? It's like the new Woodbridge. It's like Highway 27 okay. and Major yeah. Mac. Yeah, it's like the new bougie Woodbridge. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I just learned. Just north of Vaughn, right? Yeah, just north of Vaughn. Okay. <laughs> that's what's up, man. So yeah. real estate is the key. So wrapping up, key. what what's your we favorite? Got my guy King sold here. You don't need to say much. You, you know, know what time it is. Yeah. Real, <laughs> real estate is the way. Millennials to millionaires. You want to become a millionaire. That This is the easiest way, I would say, is to invest in real estate and let the property work for you. Like you can work hard right. or you can work smart. And we've talked about you working hard as well. And he already said that he didn't work smart when he was coming up most definitely yeah so So now that you have now now that you have that knowledge now it's like okay now i'm gonna invest my money and start to work smart let my money work for me instead of working 100 hours a week maybe i could work 20 or 30 or even 10 or four hours a week and it's i don't even work weekends no more it's been two years since i work weekends that's what's up man monday to friday i love that that's what's up because your industry they be working yeah Yeah, and weekends is the busiest my mom works in the auto people tell me like how you're not working saturday or even sunday i'm like sunday's church day first of all (laughs) but like first of all the lord Lord. comes first exactly (laughs) praise the lord Lord, i wouldn't have these blessings yeah jesus gave us everything so (laughs) you know but saturdays is like one of the biggest days for the automotive industry yeah and i don't work it most definitely, yeah. most definitely. Yeah. Sound like my mom. She works yeah. in the auto. And she'd be like, I ain't working no weekends. Yeah. Yeah. Let me no, tell you. No <laughs> Y'all have no. me 10, 11 hours I'm during done. the week. <laughs> it's been 20 the years, almost 15 plus that. years I've been yeah. working. I'm done. No. Nope. Nah, you definitely learn some things. So um, usually we drop a book of the episode. We are going with. You know, yeah. I'm a sneaker person, so... Shoe dog, you mm-hmm. know, Alicia's got 80 pairs of shoes, probably all Jordan 1s, <laughs> but... No, 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 I got much, a variety. You got a variety, okay. I do have a lot of Nikes and Jordans, A lot though, of ones? But I okay. do got hella Puma. Shout out okay. to Puma. They right, be paying Puma. me. All right, say no more. <laughs> they cutting the checks, so... Yeah, we, they we, cut the checks, so I got to shut them up. We can plug them. That's no problem. <laughs> so this is Shoe Dog by, by Phil Knight. It pretty much talks about how we built Nike, mm-hmm. and you guys just heard how Nero built Art in Motion. Um, just closing it out, bro. What's your favorite quote of anything? It could be a quote of yours or it could be a quote of somebody that you follow. Like, what is something that you live by that, you know, every morning when you wake up or every night before you go to sleep that helps you kind of keep going? So the difference between good and great is the attention to detail. Simple. Hey. And the discussion. This is millennials to millionaires. <laughs> like, drop the mic. <laughs> drop the mic. Mic drop. I would drop it, but it's on a stand. This is yes. Daniel King, Thank a.k.a. Thank you so much no for problem. coming. Thank, Thank you, you so for having for me here. Most course, definitely. This, this is Daniel King, a.k.a. King Sold. I'm Alicia Ace West, and that's millennials to millionaires. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, bye, bye.